the check-in screen, we're not having them touch. We are going to be holding the iPads. They have like the little, you have been in Chick-fil-A. You guys have been in Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Has a little handle. Um, you have to, if you haven't been to Chick-fil-A, we have to go. Um, but it has a little handle on the back. It also has a strap around it. So whoever's doing check-in has the iPad. You know, hey, have you been here before? Great. What's your phone number? You check them in and then it's going to pop up a little question. And so you can either have them read it. Read it. It's going to be in English, but we will have a separate little card. If they don't speak English, it'll be translated in Spanish before they're just clicking OK. That way they know what they're saying OK to. So that way it'll be there. Um, and it just asks them, has anyone in your household been sick? Has anyone been exposed to COVID? Blah, blah, blah. Super simple. And if they say OK, click OK. And then they will sign um, a waiver. Actually, the waiver probably should be signed first, first and foremost, because if they get through all that and then they, they read through the waiver, they're like, no, nah, maybe not. So the waiver is just saying, you know, we're going to do our best here to keep everyone as safe as possible. But again, anytime you step out of your house, you there's a risk. So we're just letting them know we're going to do our best, but there is still a risk coming um, to class, just putting your kids in the class. You're, no one's forcing you to. They feel comfortable with their kids in the sanctuary. There's no pressure at all. I'm not gonna, you know, you know, look down at anyone that doesn't feel comfortable putting their kids in class yet. I 100% agree that it's their decision. So if they say, no, it's okay, we're gonna keep them in service, then absolutely, a great, have a great service or whatever. So um, the waiver pretty much just states that, and I actually have it here. I'm not gonna read it to you in front of this. I'm trying to keep this real brief. Here are my papers. So there it is. Um, COVID acknowledgement and assumption of risk. So it has just the basic risk if you guys have been to the doctor or anything. It's something similar to that, but more um, geared toward churches. And then um, family responsibilities. So, you know, we're just letting families know, hey, if anyone in your family's been sick, it's best, you know, let us know or, you know, please just be honest so that way we're not putting anyone else at risk, things like that. So they sign this. Okay, perfect. As long as they agree to this, you can go ahead and take their phone number, ask them those questions, hit okay. Boom, their labels will print, and then they get their labels. So for phase one, until we're able to get more teachers to slip back into the, the other classrooms, um, they're going to join their parents in for worship. So I know it's kind of weird, like, why are we going to check them in and then send them back with their parents? Well, we're at number one, number checking for if they're healthy and if everyone in the family has been healthy. Um, and that way, as long as they have that label, we know that they're good to go. And so when worship is over, they'll dismiss the kids. We don't have to worry about hey, where, who's sticker or who, does, who hasn't been checked in. If they don't have a sticker, then you have to, you know, have to tell the parents, sorry, you have to go back to, you know, check in and complete all those questions and everything before they can come to class. So if you can help me monitor that, if they don't have a label on, they're not allowed to be back here. That means that they haven't been screened or they lost it and we still we need it. So, um, so, so they'll go to worship and then as soon as worship is over, um, whoever is scheduled okay. for um, nursery, um, make sure you're back and ready to, to walk them to the nursery. So for the nursery, for right now, also for phase one, we're taking walking babies only. Um, just, again, we can't hold the baby. We can't, like, comfort them. They're right here. So just for now, until we get a few more volunteers, we're we're growing. We already got, we got some new volunteers, and it's super awesome. So until we get more volunteers, and as long as they're comfortable with holding babies, my previous volunteers were not comfortable with anything. Um, and they're still not coming, so which is fine. It's their choice. I'm not, again, I'm not shaming or looking down at anyone, but we can't open if we don't have the volunteers to do that and that are comfortable doing that. So as long as the volunteers feel safe and comfortable um, holding a baby um, and diaper changing, then we can go ahead and move forward with that and my nursery workers can talk to me um, when they feel comfortable for that. But for right now, walking babies only, um, and if they need a diaper change, we'll pay the parents and the parents can come and change them. So nursery also got a little bit of a makeover. We have new carpet. Um, so with that said, I hated walking around in there with shoes when we had crawling babies. So we now have these little medical booties that will be on the bench or in the bench right here by nursery. So um, any parents or volunteers going in there need to put these on. You can put them on over your shoes or you can put them, take your shoes off if you want, but the ground is really hard. I wouldn't recommend walking around there. But um, that way we can keep the floor clean, um, and that way when we do bring the crawling babies back, they're not walking around on germs and stuff. So um, I think that's about it for nursery. Not too much has changed in that aspect. You're just going to be monitoring them, making sure they're not like licking the, their hand, touching a toy, and then another kid comes up. So 
we kind of separate it when we're done. Um, whoever's able to stay can show you how things are kind of set up in the classroom there. Um, so it's kind of sectioned off. We have a, we'll be having a new TV in there instead of that big old box TV. Um, so we're moving up here. Um, so they'll have like a little movie playing for now. And again, this is just phase one. I'm aiming for phase two to start in January. Praying that numbers stay down and we're able to, you know, increase our volunteer base. And again, that's a big part of making sure things are in order, making sure things are exciting. If we have volunteers that are, you know, kind of standing there like this or they're on their phone, nobody's going to want to be a part of the team like that. It doesn't look like you're excited to be there and they're not going to be excited to be there. So if you're excited, then it's exciting. Then it's like, hey, I want to be a part of that. That looks like fun, you know, even our kids. So you guys have energy. I know you do. You're, you're pent up at home, you know, get all your energy out that day, you know, yell it out, don't yell at the kids, but yell with the kids. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so, um, that is, so nursery is a little bit different in that aspect for right now. For this class, um, it is going to be kind of an odd numbers, again, because of the amount of teachers that we don't have. Again, we would have little class, which is these three to five year olds. Then we'd have first through third grade and then fourth and fifth grade. So, um, so that was, I would, I prefer two, two teachers per classroom. We were barely making it with one teacher per classroom before, um, but there's four and sometimes five Sundays to staff. So I know like this looks like a good amount of people, but if you think about that spreading it out between four weeks and that many classes, it's just not enough. So for this class, it will be three years to fifth grade, which is a huge, that's why we have these little tiny, tiny things, but it's going to be a quick, quick class because they're in there for worship and then they're in here for about 45 minutes. So we're going to keep it fun and exciting and moving so that way we don't lose the little ones and that way we don't bore the, the older ones. So we're going to have the older ones really be like the helpers in here like, come on, you guys know, you guys have been in the class before. The little, not so much, but again, hoping in phase two we'll be able to reopen little's class and they can have their own class. It's just, there's so much to touch. So much to sanitize. Again, I was originally not gonna open the nursery, but I know that's like a really big need, and I know like I know the babies just are not having it in the in the sanctuary, and I know that's yeah. So um, but the older ones are able to sit and be on their tablets or iPads or whatever, and kind of stay quiet. But the little ones want to run around, so we're gonna do our best. So just you know, help me assure parents that we're working on it. We're not we're at this point. I would like to be a full-blown, like we are ministering to kids, but with the limited help that we have and the resources and everything, right now we're going to just do our best to um, not babysit, I hate the word babysit, but be there to help so they can enjoy the service for that Sunday. But while we have the kids, we're going to do our best that they feel loved, that they feel accepted, that they feel some sense of hope because this world right now is, you know, seeming really hopeless for them and I don't want them to grow up with that feeling so we're going to do our best for that um so this will be three years three years old to fifth grade um so if for any reason we have a three-year-old that is just not having it they will not sit in their seat they want to just run around um either we can have their parent come grab them or um if as long as we're not over full in the in the nursery we can maybe have them go in the nursery for a bit um I don't want to do that because I don't want to put them back in the nursery, but I also don't want to disrupt the whole class here as well. So again, this is just for the month of December. Um, I'm hoping, hoping back in January we can have at least nursery littles and then back to this class. We probably won't have the small group classes again because a lot of surfaces to touch, a lot of toys to clean, and all of that stuff. So um, just because December is holidays and things like that, so we just don't know. Um, there's a lot to to do before then and so help me if you see someone that's not serving that just comes every week um ask them you know what what it is that they are wanting to do you know because there's so many aspects they don't have to be a teacher i know some people get like oh kids i don't know how to teach kids but if you can tap on an ipad and you can ask someone questions like boom you're great at check-in if you're just welcoming and you want to smile at people i will take you so um that's about it. Um, your packet explains a little bit more in detail the different policies and procedures. Um, I didn't put in there um, like really step-by-step -step procedures for each classroom because that is going to be in Planning Center. So if you have not downloaded Planning Center services, it's a little green app, um, and that's where we do all our scheduling. If you're a teacher, that's where
where we put all of our curriculum, so you can look at it ahead of time. Our order of service is in there, so everyone can be on the same page. Um, we are asking that everyone be here by 9.30 next week. Um, that's about an hour before service. Um, typically, I am fine if you are here by, by 10. That gives you time to check, especially now we're gonna go through a screening process as well. All volunteers, where's my paper? So every, every Sunday we will have a volunteer health screening form. Um, so we will ask you, you know, if you had a cough or a breath, fever, no, okay, for any other symptoms, no, okay, in temperature check, boom, all right, you're good to go. You go into the front office, you check in and you get your label. So everyone has to have a label. That way we know that they're okay to be back here. Um, and talk a little bit more about that in your manual as well, uh, as far as people that are allowed back here. Um, let's see. I believe that is it. Is there any questions? Um, not really. It's pretty. It's pretty simple. Pretty similar to what we've been doing before. Kind of like a little bit more of a simpler version for now. Just remind, reminding you, reminding everyone. It's just for now. Just to see. Just to get our feet back, you know, in, in the water and kind of get get the hang of things and get going again. Once we can gain a few more volunteers and we can get, you know, everything is running smoothly with our new check-in process, that's like the main thing that's way different. So that has to go good. So I will not be singing for a while because I will be um, up there making sure everything is going smoothly. Sometimes the internet is a pain. Um, so I will be doing that, but eventually I would love for someone to take over that and they come, they help make sure that everything is good to go, all the check-in stuff is ready because it needs to be ready before 10, so that way the volunteers can come and check in, get their labels, and then we meet at 10 o'clock in um, the conference room. So we'll meet in there. I want, I want to have donuts and coffee ready for you guys that day too, so I'm excited for that. We can work it off with the kids. If you're scheduled for this class, um, for now, again, this is so quick. Um, we won't be doing small groups or anything. You're just going to be helping to monitor the kids. That's, you know, like they're not, like, again, like falling asleep. But, well, falling asleep, but like help participate, you know, like I'm not, that way I'm not the only one up here, like, who's excited? And the kids are like, <laughs> so you can help, like, yeah, we're excited. Because it's going to be, again, it's like starting, starting over with them. Yeah, so you'll be here if they need to use the restroom. Uh, we will be utilizing the room next door um, has the bathroom. So it's the same as before. You stand out in the hallway. You watch them walk to the bathroom. Make sure they don't come out the other side because there's another door. So if they take a little bit, make sure you just kind of knock and check on them. But that way they have their privacy and we're not like standing by the door. We're still keeping, you know, the, the safety procedures up. But you're standing right there monitoring them that they went to the bathroom, but then they come back straight in here. Um, so that's what you're doing when you're in this class. Super easy um, for my junior volunteers. If you're running media, you'll just be making sure, like, I'll show you. If my mic is ringing, what, what to bring down. If the if I say, can you turn it up a bit, you'll know what to turn up. Super easy. It's literally just two knobs that you move up and down. If the computer freaks out, there's not much we can do. <laughs> um, me and you both will just have to sit there and wait for it. But um, junior volunteers too. So you'll be the sign holders because I know you guys have the energy. So I want you out there. I don't want you being like this because this doesn't look like I'm happy to see anyone. Be like, we're happy to see you. Hey, welcome. We're so excited you're here. Um, so I went to, uh, I took quite a VBS at Pure Heart and it was so exciting. I wanted to stay <laughs> um, because their volunteers were so excited and so welcoming and she wanted to stay. She's like, can we go back? Can we go back? And I'm like, well, VBS is not for next year, so then it got canceled this year. But um, I wanted to be excited because kids ministry is exciting. What else, where else can you go? Kids are forgiving. Kids are like, you know, you can you can totally mess up. I've messed up so many times and I'm like, blah, and they just laugh and I'm like, let me try again. And so, you know, they're so forgiving. They're not judgmental like the adults are. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so they're just so fun, and I just love them. <laughs>
all my kids have to puke. But my kids pastor made such a lasting impact on me um, that, like, even though to him it's just these small little things, to us it's just small little things, but hey, hopefully in a couple of years, kids are, hey, remember when Miss Carla said this? And that was funny, but then they remembered, like, wow, that's so true. Like, it's happening right now. Like, things like I tell kids, I'm like, you don't know. You're not dealing with this yet, but you could, this could be something that happens. It's just to bring, you know, reality. You know, we, we tell them, you know, biblically um, about, about God, but then we talk to them about real life because, you know, you have to put both of those together. So, so thank you guys so much for coming today. Um, you can take those home if you haven't filled it out yet. No worries, you can bring them back um, next week. But those are what we'll be passing out to everyone. That will be in the front office or in the check-in lobby. That's what I'll be saying. I gotta get used to saying that. It used to be calling the front office lobby, but the check-in lobby. Um, and we'll have all of these, all of these procedures and all these pages in like a little file folder. So if for any reason, you know, you're like, hey, you know, I've got someone that wants to volunteer and I gave them a packet, you know, so that way I'm not the only one like running around with a, like a chicken with my head cut off. So, <laughs> um, but thank you so much for being a part of the team. If you have any questions or concerns, you can talk to me now. You can take a quick look, if you guys don't mind, um, in the nursery and in the new check-in area and I can show you kind of how it, how it looks right now.